The views and opinions expressed do not necessarily reflect those of Access Fort Wayne, the Allen County Public Library, or any other supporting groups. If you'd like to produce a show, call us at 260-421-1250. Let me be your lighthouse so I can show you the Hello, this is Patty Hunter. This is Patty's page that we're doing today in Studio B. Today I have a special guest, but right now I'm going to introduce you to my co host, John Digmeyer. Hello, Patty. How are you today? I'm A OK right here, you know. And to his right is Mr. Leland P. Gamson. That's right. You bet. Hello, how are and you? And good afternoon, Patty. Good and afternoon. good afternoon, John. So, we brought you here all the way from Marion. That's right, Indiana. Marion, Indiana. And were you born and raised there? No, I was born in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Uh, my parents were in the Foreign Service, so we moved around a bit. Oh. But at age nine, we were settled into the Washington, D.C. area. So you're all over the map. Mm, that's right. But I've been living in Marion since 1981. Oh, that's a good. That's a good. Okay. Uh, that's good. Uh, uh, while you were growing up, who had influenced you the most, especially... Uh, well, I don't want to say one person because it will exclude more. someone else. Oh. Uh, my father uh, would read to us, and I loved it. And my mother encouraged us to read. Mm. And then we lived, even though it was only three miles outside of the Washington, D.C. line, it was along the Chesapeake and Ohio Canal and the Potomac um, River we could see a glimpse of from our house. Mm. So I had kind of what I felt at the time as a child as kind of a Huck Finn, Mark Twain oh uh, boyhood. That must be fun. Yeah, it, it was. Oh. How old were you when you became interested in writing itself? Um, I remember in fourth or fifth grade that I found out um, in school that uh, Paul Revere actually had a forgotten partner, William Dawes. And I thought, it's only because of that poem mm -hmm. that Paul Revere was immortalized. Well, <clears throat> I'll fix that. I'll write a poem for William Dawes. Listen, my children, can you pause to hear the midnight uh, ride of William Dawes? Um, alas, um, this poem went no further than my fourth grade classroom. Well, you did good. Uh, but I had fun doing it. Yes, it must have been a thrill to know that you have a talent, a gift for something. Yes. God has given everybody a gift. I couldn't agree more. Yes. It's interesting to uh, immortalize hidden people in American history. The, 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 my, uh, some of my relatives came from Massachusetts and were involved in the American Revolution. And I can, oh. and I, I, I remember my grandfather telling me uh, about one of his relatives who was a captain in the American Revolution. And there are so many of these people that are out there that have been missed um, so how did you originally get interested in writing? Uh, well, I'll rephrase that more, storytelling. Oh, yeah. um, oh. When I was working as a nature counselor in the Poconos Mountains when right. I was in college, um, I thought the stories that I made up were better than the standard campfire stories, because mine were 
more moral uh, than kind of amoral or oh, just oh, oh, uh, Edgar yeah. Allan Poe right. typey things. So mm -hmm. you were very creative in those. Yes, and then because of the positive reception mm -hmm. of the campers, I thought, you know, I do have a talent. You do have a gift. You know, like mm -hmm. I had um, Samson confronting uh, the mummy and Dracula, you know, and of course pounding them because he had strength from God. Is that the book? Uh, uh, no, no, uh, this is a different take. Uh, oh. uh, um, whoops, yeah, let's talk of, about this book. Yeah, jumping ahead. Samson at the Olympics has a story um, where the ancient Greeks invite um, ancient Israel to participate in the Greek Olympics. Of course, you have to suspend history because there's a thousand year gap between the oh, two. Yeah. But anyway, it's a children's story. So I guess, of course, Samson. What would be like in those days? Yes. Samson. Yeah, Samson is on the Israeli Olympic team. Well, he is the Israeli Olympic That's right. team. Ah. And it has it, it does have twists and turns uh, yeah. to it. It's, it's not just simply Samson breaking every record. It's a record. story, really. That's right. Right. And uh, well, your first job being a writer, what was that then? Okay. Um, years ago, in the early 80s, I wrote for the Wesleyan Methodist Church with some of their Sunday school curriculum. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, they had their headquarters in Marion, Indiana at oh, the time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, there was some satisfaction writing for Sunday school curriculum, but I still felt like a mortician. You know, I would do good work and then it would be forgotten. So I wanted to write books because they're more permanent, you know, than magazine articles. Mm -hmm. And how many have you written so far? Uh, there's five books that are out with Sojourn Press Sojourn, right now, right? and five more that are close to being published. Mm -hmm. So uh, most of these, uh, what style, these children's books, right? Oh, yes. Uh, they're all strictly children's books and illustrated for children. Oh. Um, I do write... Uh, for a adult magazine, some articles, um, but I guess I'm getting kind of sidetracked. Yeah, I, yeah. No, my yeah. focus is children's yeah. stories. Mm -hmm. So, um, who was the illustrators of these books? Okay, the several different ones. Uh, that's right. Uh, this one, which is if your dog were a human, is illustrated by Karen Camden Welch who is a Huntington County uh, resident and an art therapist and artist. She also has mm -hmm. illustrated two more books with me. And it's kind of a fanciful uh, story when children or the inner child and all of us think, if my dog were a human, what would he be like? I um, mean, would he be a cooperative, friendly human, or would he be a bully? Would he be a loaf? Yeah. Uh, would he like to be the center of attention? Is that therapeutic? Um, pardon? Writing is therapeutic. Yes, yes. And then the sequel, of course, is if your cat were a human. Oh, I got to get that one because I have cats. <laughs> <laughs> then, of, the t of the two, of the cat <laughs> and the dog, which one did you enjoy writing the most? Um, I, I love both cats and dogs, <laughs> and I don't like this, you have to choose sides. Oh, okay. Um, we do have dogs, so I think it probably came easiest. Because oh, you know what a dog good. is like. I never had a dog in my life, and so it's interesting how other yes. people are dog people like you. Yes, and I've never had a cat. a cat in my life. Oh, merciful heavens. But I I love her cat, oh, Scotty. Scotty a Pookie. Pookie is his lady. Mm -hmm. Scotty is 17 and Pookie is 13. <laughs> oh, has a younger... Uh, oh, yes, a younger, younger girlfriend. Uh, yes, girlfriend. Well, wife or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Mate. Mate. Oh, that's all right. 
Uh, how, so you published five so far, and you got another five to go. That's right. So that's ten altogether. Yes. When did you first start to write these books? Um, I retired from the VA and the Army uh, Reserve. Let's see, in t uh, 2013, um, so I thought the time is now, after right. 35 years in mm -hmm. civil service, mm -hmm. to not postpone um, writing these sure. children's books, because if a person has, like, athletic aspirations, there's a window mm -hmm. um, to get cracking, you know, then it's forever closed. I know mm -hmm. with writing, the window is a lot broader, but it doesn't go on indefinitely. Mm -hmm. So I thought I don't want to be in my 90s with complaining to my wife, Bonnie, woulda, shoulda, coulda, um, so I better just do it. Right. That's good because you, you've got the talent and the, you know, the creativity mm -hmm. and the urge to do the writing to help our little kids. Uh, what lessons are they basically about? Uh, let's see. Where is Grandpa? Okay, where is Grandpa, which is used by the Aaron Center for Grieving Children and oh. several other counseling centers, mm -hmm. and a funeral parlors have purchased it. It's about death, where um, this is the one true story where Hannah, a niece of ours, her grandfather um, Brown always was missing. And then her grandmother answers the question, where is grandpa? Yeah. It has a strictly kind of biblical world view. Yeah. Oh. Um, where, you know, grandpa is in heaven. I know there are books that are written from a secular point of view on death you know, we only exist in the memory of the person. I mean, the inner what child. What happens afterwards yeah, is um, very important. That's right. I mean, I've always unapologetically mm -hmm. believed mm -hmm. in life after death. Definitely. And um, it's written, yeah, again, I write from that perspective. Do you write, you live once, you die once, and then you are in heaven or wherever? Um, yes. Um, I, I mean, I don't write from the perspective of reincarnation. No, I don't. Uh, yeah. That either. Um, but there are people out there. Uh, yes. It's good to point that out. Too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What other books are you? Oh, then there is, uh, Why Can't Dogs Talk, illustrated by Alyssa Tanner. Oh, they do talk in their sort of Oh, right? um, but, but I'm speaking about <laughs> why don't they speak English? Oh, no, okay. Uh, okay, I they mean, speak dog. Th they speak dog talk. Cats speak uh, Cantonese. And then, yes, and then in, um, mm -hmm. in, in rhyme, a little girl, mm -hmm. um, Anna, tells her father that she wishes God had made her dog Polly that she spoke English. Right. And then in rhyme, uh, her father explains to her in kind of a Dr. Seuss way um, how it would really turn the world topsy-turvy if dogs could really speak English. You're know, starting with the dog um, wanting different kind of food, the dog ordering uh, <laughs> uh, meat from the butcher, on the then phone, no less. the dog is going shopping with her. The dog is criticizing her piano playing. Then the dog is wanting to go to school with her. And eventually, if you think about it logically, if dogs could speak English, they would have our same intelligence and they could legitimately demand the right to vote in full citizenship. And you know something? Dogs and cats, they know English. They know our little cat, Pookie, when you talk to her, she listens, and when you ask her to do something, she does it. Yes. She understands English. Yes, I, and I agree, they understand English, mm -hmm. but, but they, they don't really speak. articulate right. the way we do. Right, oh my goodness. It's true. I it's think tr to turn this around, <laughs> okay. something that I really 
like about your books and the way that you've explained them is that they approach things the way that a child's mind would approach yes, them. Yes, absolutely. Right on the mark, John. Um, and I loved what the great George MacDonald said. MacDonald? Uh, yes. M-A-C? Uh, George MacDonald. Uh, C.S. Lewis considered him the greatest Christian writer. I'm a writer. MacDonald clan myself. Um, and he said, I do not write for children. I write for the child within yeah. everybody. Right. And, and my inner child is very much alive. <laughs> and then, let's see, which book have I not come to? Let's get to donkeys. Oh, yes, yes. Donkeys. Locale, the donkey who carried Jesus. It's the um, story of a Christ's entry into Jerusalem mm -hmm. from the donkey's perspective. Other people have written about the donkey Jesus rode in Jerusalem, mm -hmm. but in my version, the donkey and his mother are animated. They do speak um, to each other. Right. And then uh, the girl and her father who are, have gone into Jerusalem speak to each other. The humans speak to the humans, mm -hmm. the donkeys to the donkeys, and then of course Jesus speaks to everybody because, you know, he uh, understood. Yes, understands all languages. And in this version, um, the donkey does witness the crucifixion and then encounters the resurrected Christ. Um, the name Lokael, Jesus names the donkey Lokael which is in Hebrew for one who carries the Lord. Yes, and L is Lord. That's right, right. Lo K L. yes. Right. And then the donkey does ask Christ, are there animals in heaven? And of course, Christ uh, answers in the affirmative, saying, well, I'm gonna return riding on a horse. So if there's horses in heaven, sure. there's donkeys. This has to be all animals. <laughs> Even insects. Oh. Anyways. Yes, but I hope mosquitoes are not biting <laughs> us me. there. Yeah. I'm not too keen on hornets. Uh, so for they do differ from each other. Um, so the theme is basically reaching out to the children and having them think. Yes. Um, again, some of my books are overtly biblical and basically for a, a Christian market right. and Christian bookstores. Others are kind of wholesome, uh, moral. Good and stuff. Yes, I guess you could describe them as secular or at least for a, also for a secular market. Wow. So, um, John? Well, I like your moral approach because it's implicit, if not overt, in every single book. Mm -hmm. That it that every single book and idea, even from the first storytelling that you explain, mm -hmm. it it all is tied to Christian moral concept. And I think that's what makes these books what they are. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. It's, it's, it, it's kind of like the making the dish, cooking the dish, mm -hmm. and it's the right seasoning for the right dish. In fact, it's the only seasoning for the dish. And, and that's what sometimes we forget. And that's, and that's why I think that the grandpa book is, yes. is so Essential. effective. Right. Uh, because 
it has that implicit in it, the Christianity. Yes, yes, yes. I, of course, you're did preaching you, to the choir. Um, <laughs> of course, did you yes. Originally, write for your children. Um, we do. We, we do not have biological children. We uh, did uh, partially raise six children uh, uh, for six or seven uh, years. Oh, that's nice. Um, I think I did write. Um, read them stories, you know, but I don't remember making up stories for them. Um, but again, it was in summer mm -hmm. camps that I was making up stories. Yeah. Um, I just came from a C.S. Lewis and Friends conference at Taylor University. Mm -hmm. You know, we were you know, going over the importance of storytelling and mm -hmm. how it captures our worldview since um, you know, human beings first came onto yeah. this planet. Yeah. So you're married, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, when you normally write, is it done in the evening, in the afternoon, when it's quiet, or you just write any any other time? It's usually in the evening. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes at 3 a.m. or so, and I have a dream, an idea, and I just got to wake up and um, you do. write it down and then look at it in the um, morning. Sometimes it was a lot better at 3 a.m. when I was asleep than it looks when I'm conscious. But other times, well, I'm glad I captured that. It could have been do you have, lost. Do you have a, um, to talk into? Uh, no, I they really recorded? need to do that. You should. Yes. So you can record it the moment you wake up. You say, oh, <laughs> let's do that. It's interesting. Um, how do you begin with an idea? Do you begin orally, talking it out, or do you begin writing it out? I, I think it's uh, visual in one's mm. head. Mm -hmm. um, an example of that is where if your dog were a human, Mm -hmm. um, it came when I would take every Thursday uh, disabled veterans into the community uh, with a volunteer, Sally oh. Bancroft, from our church. And then we were talking about our own dogs, because she's a dog person, rescues dogs. So mm -hmm. we had about, at that time, about eight dogs between us. And thinking, if, you know, like your dog, Bindi, were a person, what would she be like? And then she, Sally just went on, oh, she'd definitely be a saleswoman because she's very convincing <laughs> about things and very persuasive. <laughs> um, but you really got to watch her. Um, so then that's where that idea came from. Mm -hmm. uh, Samson is just sort of associative thinking, you know, what right. if. Yeah. Then also, uh, thinking uh, with the inner child with Lokael, mm -hmm. uh, because Balaam's donkey in Scripture, you know, was given the gift of speech. Right. And um, in um, a Jewish uh, kind of commentary on Scripture, it's believed that Solomon spoke the language of all animals. I, mean, I can't remember. Maybe that actually could be in Scripture. Yeah. Uh, he was so wise, so of course yeah. Christ would be able to communicate with animals. So, um, you've been wanting to write all your life, finally, within the last five years, you've been doing uh, it. Yes, got serious right about it. You yeah, you um, I have written poems. I am oh. a member of the Academy of American Poets. I you know. Yeah, um, in the, my 20s. You know, I mm. got published enough to reach that goal and occasionally write a poem. Well, you got a poem for us, do you know? Uh, that's right. So um, I think it kind of captures this, this, this. Here. everything. I want to talk to you today about toys and picture books and how I always wanted toy castles, knights, and sailing ships but still gladly received miniature cars, trucks, 
gas station tugs, and brightly colored books with traffic, buildings, trains, and boats. Now there is a clean goodwill to traffic and service stations, and the Mississinewa River looks incomplete without river boats. Not until her waters meet the Ohio do they become part of a real river. Here is where my pal Scuffy, the tug, dodged the big boats. Today I see my cement mixer grown up and multiplied, driving on the streets. Its drivers, of course, unaware of the true origin of their vehicles. When my car caught fire on the streets of Fort Wayne, I ran into a fire station for help. The dog and bear crew from my childhood book with the fox driver came to life and disguised as people, put out the fire quickly and left. But I could see from the distance they really were bears and dogs, walking upright with a fox driver, their fire coats covering their tails. <laughs> what, what, what? What's the main reason why you wrote that? Um, it shows that the children's books that I had as far back as my memory mm -hmm. goes have permanently affected the way that I see the world. And of course then I go back to uh, modern children's mm -hmm. books mm -hmm. and th um, that keeps getting reinforced. Oh, yeah. Um, also with um, children's cartoons like, I um, can't remember their names, these rescue dogs, um, one of the puppies, a uh, Paw Patrol, you know, right. is the same theme. Right. You know, one of the pups is a firefighter, one's a policeman, one's an EMT. Mm -hmm. You know, so this interconnectedness just perpetuates um, itself. You know, getting on towards the end of the show, we have to have you on again when you have the other written. Oh, I love to come on with my next five books. Yes. John. Well, the person we haven't mentioned yet that we ought to mention is your wife. Bonnie. Yeah. Oh, Bonnie. Uh, do we bring her up here? Uh, Why, just come over and say, she's, no. She's getting she's shy. shy. Um, oh. Uh, my beautiful bride. <laughs> okay, I, I, I'm looking at her, but... Um, she's say say a few words. Yes. Um, when I came to Marion, in Indiana in 1981, I was planning on staying for at least a year, mm -hmm. but that's 37 years ago oh, because I, I met uh, my wife, Bonnie, Bonnie. Um, a, a Hoosier. Mm. A Hoosier? Yes, and without her organization and her computer skills, I really couldn't go anywhere because I may be creative, but with computers, I'm a dinosaur. I'm dyslexic. Mm. Mm. So, Neil, this is the end of the show, my dear. I'm glad you and Bonnie had come uh, down, uh, no, up. Where is up. It? up. Up, yes. Up. <laughs> I don't know, up from Marion, Indiana. So may we see you again? Yes, I'm looking forward to it, and thanks for having me on your show, Patty Thank you, sir. and John. Thank okay, you, John. Okay, take care. And we'll see you next yes. week. God bless. God bless, and hopefully we'll see you next week. May you have a great week. God bless. time apart give in to all our fears God will keep us close from up above so until we meet again God speed my love God is with us 